Hi and welcome to OTR Miniatures. Today I'm going to be working through getting all of these figures from the Mortal Realms magazines that I've got assembled just to clear up a bit of space. So, cue time lapse. So I thought I'd do something a bit different whilst you're watching the time lapse and I thought I'd read from the book that I got with the Mortal Realms collection which is the Amethyst Stave. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. From the maelstrom of a sundered world, the eight realms were born. The formless and the divine exploded into life. Strange new worlds appeared in the firmament, each one gilded with spirits, gods and men. Noblest of the gods was Sigmar. For years beyond reckoning he illuminated the realms, wreathed in light and majesty as he carved out his reign. His strength was the power of thunder, his wisdom was infinite. Mortal and immortal alike, kneeled before his lofty throne. Great empires rose and, for a while, treachery was banished. Sigmar claimed the land and sky as his own and ruled over a glorious age of myth. But cruelty is tenacious. As had been foreseen, the great alliance of gods and men tore itself apart. Myth and legend crumbled into chaos. Darkness flooded the realms. Torture, slavery and fear replaced the glory that came before. Sigmar turned his back on the mortal kingdoms, disgusted by their fate. He fixed his gaze instead on the remains of the world he had lost long ago, brooding over his charred core, searching endlessly for a sign of hope. And then, in the dark heat of his rage, he caught a glimpse of something magnificent. He pictured a weapon born of the heavens, a beacon powerful enough to pierce the endless night, an army hewn from everything he had lost. Sigmar set his artisans to work, and for long ages they toiled, striving to harness the power of the stars. As Sigmar's great work neared completion, he turned back to the realms and saw that the dominion of chaos was almost complete. The hour for vengeance had come. Finally, with lightning blazing across his brow, he stepped forth to unleash his creations. The age of Sigmar had begun. Prologue Sigmar's voice boomed in Auric Ravenscar's head. Travel to Lyria, find the ring. The words were simple enough, but Lyria was vast, covered in seemingly endless deserts, barren moors and lands scarred by bizarre magical phenomena and plagued by the undead. Ravenscar had arrived from Azir on a bolt of lightning, emerging in the midst of a windswept moorland. He was a knight quester of the Stormcast Eternals, a champion of the God King Sigma forged from the dead and utterly committed to the will of his creator. For weeks he had marched, conversing with no one, encountering nothing but the occasional shambling skeleton or craven ghoul. Sleep had been nearly impossible. There could be no true rest until the task was complete, for those words rang in his head at every waking moment. Travel to Lyria, find the ring. Sigmar's words had forced him on, driving him through torrential rain punishing blizzard and searing sandstorm. The night quester could not explain why or how he chose his path. There was no conscious thought behind his movement. His route was decided by fate, or perhaps by the hand of Sigmar himself. He was close now though. He knew this feeling well. His heart had begun to race, his soul aching. The mysterious ring, wherever it might be, would soon be his. Auric Ravenscar strode up a muddy path that led over the crest of a mound before dropping down through a copse of trees bowed low by decades of punishing weather. The leaves of the trees drooped low, snagging on the plates of Ravenscar's armour as he pushed through the foliage. As he emerged from the thickest of the brush, colossal iron gates rose out from of the gloom before him, their bars decorated with skulls and overgrown with grave rose briars. His nostrils flared at the sickly sweet smell of the flowers. He was drawn forwards through the gates which opened at the lightest touch, revealing haunting rows of crumbling tombstones beyond. He continued, forcing a path through briar and ramble. Eventually he came to a stop before a stone mausoleum, half buried under overgrown foliage. It was ancient. Of that he was sure. As he brushed the ivy and brambles from the tomb's entrance, faint sounds echoed from within, like the grating of stone against stone. Grave robbers, or perhaps the dead had beaten him to, to the ring. Whoever they were, they would not escape with their prize. 
With the aid of his blade, Ravenscar began cutting away the rest of the foliage that covered the exterior of the tomb, searching for the entrance. After some considerable effort, his armor gauntlet came to rest against the raw iron gate that covered the entrance. Thieves would have needed to clear the vines before entering the tomb, he thought. The night haunts undead servants of Nagash, the great necromancer. With no physical form to speak of, they were capable of passing through solid walls with ease. With more urgency now, Ravenscar cut the rest of the vines from the entrance and ran a hand against a stone arch. The dilapidated iron gate that covered the dark entrance to the tomb had rusted badly and looked fit to collapse at any second. At its heart, it featured an elaborate metalwork sigil depicting a twin-headed viper called around a staff. The sigil wasn't familiar to him, which wasn't overly surprising, given that the tomb in question had clearly been abandoned for centuries. As he brushed more of the ivy free, the original splendour of the tomb was revealed. More snake-like figures were carved either side of the doorway, and above the arch loomed a skeletal face that Ravenskull recognised immediately. He scowled at the sight of the great necromancer's grim visage, and offered a brief prayer to Sigma. Offerings and dedications to Nagash were not unheard of in tombs and mausoleums, for it was wise to pay respect to the god of death, especially when you were about to enter the nether realms of Shaish. Still, the sight of Nagash's traitorous face angered Ravenscar more than it should. The night quester could again hear the grating of stones from the depths of the tomb. Carefully, and as quietly as he could manage in plate armour, he pushed against the iron gate. It gave way immediately, hinges collapsing. Ravenscar winced as the metal crashed to the floor with a sharp clang. Brandishing his sword, he waited for any reaction from within. None came. The sounds from within the tomb continued. He reached into his pack, withdrew a torch, doused its cloth head with oil and, using his shield hand, struck a flame. The torch roared to life providing illumination as he stepped into the tomb. The flickering flame of the torch cast long, dancing shadows against the cold stone walls. The upper chamber was octagonal in shape. Two of the walls featured arched doorways, the one through which he had entered and another on the opposite side of the room. Stone shelves had been carved into the remaining walls. Funerary wrappings and an assortment of human bones were piled high in each of the recesses. Nothing seemed to have been disturbed in this chamber, and no effort had been made to rifle through the remains. The door on the far side of the room led to a sharp stone staircase that led deeper into the mausoleum. It was likely that the bodies in the entrance had belonged to low-ranking members of the family, or perhaps even loyal servants, rewarded with a place beside their masters upon their deaths. The true riches, were there any to be had, would lie below. As Ravenscar moved towards the stairwell, the crashing and banging began once more, drifting up from the chamber below. Ravenscar moved slowly but purposefully towards the stairwell and began to descend, sword held ready, torch lighting the way. The stairs and walls were slick with centuries of mould and decay, and it was all he could do to stay on his feet. The steps were hazardous indeed. Whilst the rain hadn't penetrated this deeply into the tomb, a thin layer of moss and lichen made the stone perilously slippery, particularly in Sigmarite plate armour. Thankfully, whoever was in the process of tearing the tomb apart was making more than enough noise to make mask his approach. Softly, slowly, he made his way down the steps. It took Ravenscar some time to pick his way to the bottom. All the while, Sigmar's words echoed in the back of his mind. Travel to Lyria. Find the ring. Reaching the last step, he raised his torch and peered into the darkened room beyond. The stairs opened out into a large chamber with a high, vaulted ceiling. Stone carvings of armoured skeletal warriors stared down from the vaulted arches above. As he played his torchlight across the room, the night quester noted that several stone sarcophagi lined the walls and alcoves at the outer edge of the chamber. Each one of the stone coffins appeared to have been broken into. Heavy lids had been smashed into pieces and now lay on the floor. The bodies that had lain within had been cast out of their places 
of rest. Tattered funerary wrappings and cracked bones were scattered haphazardly across the uneven flagstones. The trail of destruction led to the door on the far side of the room from the stairwell. He made his way through the scattered remains, trying not to step on any of the shards of bone. As he shuffled forwards, he swept his torch across the chamber. Jewels, ceremonial weapons and tarnished armour scraps were visible amongst the remains of the dead. Yet more evidence that thieves were not to blame. Ravenscar gripped his sword a little tighter. Continuing towards the doorway, he noticed that the temperature in the tomb had begun to drop, getting colder and colder the deeper he delved. His breast now condensed into clouds in the chill air before him. He felt the cold less than any mortal, but this chill was uncomfortable, unnatural. The scrabbling noises had ceased by the time he reached the door, blanketing the tomb in a silence that had him on edge, ready for some foul spirit to leap out at him at any moment. The door covering the exit had long since crumbled away, leaving only a few traces of worm-infested wood and rusted iron that hung limply from the frame. He edged towards the doorway and, torch in hand, peered inside. The torchlight fought the darkness of the chamber, partially illuminating it. This room was circular in shape, with the same vaulted ceiling as the previous chamber. As his eyes moved across the space, he noted that the carvings here were far more elaborate. Tattered tapestries of skeletal warriors and plate-armoured human soldiers battling each other hung limply from the walls on the right side of the room, worn by time. The floor was marble, its surface smooth and even, its once sparkling surface now dulled by centuries of dust and neglect. Then the light fell upon an open sarcophagus. The lid had fallen to one side. Upon its surface had been the image of a bearded and robed man, his hands clasped across his chest. A name had once been etched into the coffin, but time and corrosion had rendered it indistinct. Ravenscar swept his torch around the chamber, only for its flickering light to fall upon something that caused him to raise his sword. The gaunt figure of a woman stood in the torchlight. She appeared to be standing between two stone sarcophagi, the open one on her right and another to her left. Her form seemed to glow softly in the firelight, motes of dust glinting in the air beside her. She made no move to turn, even as the flickering light of the torch fell across her. Auburn hair flowed down her back, and she wore a tattered dress that seemed to float and glint in the still air. Ravenscar noticed that the bare skin on her arms was a milky white, the sickly pallor of the dead. A musty stench filled the burial chamber, and despite the cold, the air seemed thick and heavy, sapping his strength as well as his will. Ravenscar edged forwards, dagger raised, and opened his mouth to address the stranger. Turn around, let me see your face, he growled. The closer Ravenscar got, however, the colder he felt, and then he was no longer able to form any words. As he moved, he slipped slightly on the damp flagstone floor, nearly losing his footing. The figure shifted in the light, her hair whipping around as she turned to face him. Ravenscar felt a shiver run through his body as he took in the woman's features. Deep red hair framed a face that would have inspired blood-chilling fear in a mere mortal. Her features were contorted into a horrific expression of misery and rage. Her milky skin was stretched tight across angular cheekbones, and her lower jaw hung wide open, exposing a set of rotten teeth. She drifted forwards, giving out a croaking moan that seemed to reverberate through the night quester's bones. It was then that Ravenscar noticed she had not been standing between the sarcophagi, for she had no legs. The lower half of her body trailed away in a haze of ghostly funerary wrappings. Her eyes were the most terrifying thing of all, however, pitiless pools of hatred that glowed with a soft, green light. The spirit's glowing gaze seemed to pierce Ravenscar's very soul, but he was no mere mortal. He was a night quester of the Hammers of Sigmar, and it would take more than a mere spirit to make him flee. He recognised the cursed creature as a tomb banshee, a servant of Nagash and a creature of pure evil. In one of her pale, clawed hands, the ghost held a wicked dagger. In the other, something silver sparkled in the dancing light. Find the ring. The spectre howled, a terrifying and potent scream that threw Ravenscar backwards. 
causing him to stumble and fall. As he struggled to get to his feet, two more banshees drifted through the walls of the chamber. These spirits appeared as empty bodices, their faces covered by silken veils. He recognised them immediately as Maimon banshees, for he had heard tales of such creatures and their desire to kill those with magical power. Each of the banshees carried a wicked dagger in one of their clawed hands. They swept through the chamber at, at a furious speed, darting past their red-headed ally and straight towards the prone knight. Ravenscar rolled to his feet and through the doorway he had come through, keeping the gaze in view as he did so. His eyes darted between the two Maimon banshees and he waited for their move. They circled him menacingly. I am Auric Ravenscar, he bellowed, voice rolling like thunder. Knight Quester, honoured son of Sigma, I will claim what belongs to Azir. I will not be denied. Flee or be destroyed. The key is ours! The tomb banshee screeched in reply. You will not leave this place alive! The first Maimon banshee darted upwards, nearly touching the ceiling before diving towards Ravenscar from above. The second one came in low, trying to slash at his legs. With a speed that seemed impossible for such a large man, the knight quester lunged forwards and thrust his blade upwards, skewering the first spirit through the chest. It howled in fury and pain, before disappearing in a cloud of green mist. One of the geists dispatched. He turned to the second, angling his shield downwards to deflect its wild strikes. The spirit, unable to breach Ravenscar's guard, shrieked in fury, circling him stabbing and hacking furiously with her icy blade. Each strike of the cursed blade scraped across the face of Ravenscar's shield, with an agonising screech that tortured the senses. Ravenscar fended off the creature's increasingly desperate attacks and drove the case back with his shield before launching into a series of counter-attacks. The Banshee was fast, but Ravenscar fought with patience, timing each of his strikes to perfection. The Banshee's attacks became even more desperate and as the creature overcommitted to a flurry of dagger strikes, Ravenscar dropped an armoured shoulder and thrust out his sword. The death strike cut into the spirit's shrouded form, finally inflicting a wound grievous enough to break apart its incorporeal body. The defeated ghost emitted one final shriek of fury before fading from existence. The swift demise of the Maimon Banshees left only the Tomb Banshee remaining. This one was the leader, Ravenscar surmised. She floated in the doorway at the far end of the room, her jaw open wide, teeth bared, the smell of rot and decay emanating from her mouth. Ravenscar charged, trying to cover the ground before the ghost could unleash a scream. He failed. The scream penetrated his soul. He could feel its fell power, the cold burning through his veins. The sonic force of the scream slammed into Ravenscar's golden breastplate, denting the sigmarite metal. The Knight Quester grunted, dropping to one knee under the force of the supernatural attack. But he did not fall. Instead, Ravenscar dug the point of his shield into the floor and levered himself to his feet. Shaking his head, he raised his sword and addressed the Banshee. There is no escape from Sigmar's justice, spirit. Submit. Embrace your demise, he rumbled, his voice the storm. The ghost threw back her head and laughed responding in a scratchy, high-pitched voice. A silver ring glistened on one of her long, clawed fingers, its purple runes giving out a soft glow. You think to stand in the way of Nagash, as he is born? Soon the stave will be ours, and your soul's forfeit to the great Necronancer, she screeched. Then she darted upwards towards the stone ceiling and the surface beyond. Before the spirit could make her escape, though, Raven Skull was on the move charging towards the fleeing Banshee with a speed that belied his massive frame. He took four bounding steps across the room, planted an armour foot upon a stone sarcophagus, and leapt towards the ghast. Sigma! he roared, sword crackling with lightning that illuminated the darkened tomb. His strike cleaved through the fleeing Banshee, blade leaving a visible tear in the spirit's unsubstantial body. She shrieked as the force of the blow forced her ghostly form towards the flagstone floor. The ghost thrashed and clawed at the golden armoured warrior, a dagger biting between his plate armour. Ravenskull withdrew his blade once more, aimed 
at the point between the creature's soulless eyes and thrust. The banshee's screams ended abruptly. As her form faded from existence, the ring fell from her clawed finger, bouncing across the flagstones before coming to rest in the centre of the room. With the skirmish over, the only sound that remained in the dimly lit chamber was Raven Scar's intake of breath as he calmed his racing heart. At some point during the fight, he had dropped the torch. It lay flickering on the flagstone floor, the flames beginning to die and threatening to shroud the room in darkness once more. He collected the torch from its resting place and held it out, looking for the ring. It didn't take him long to locate it. He stepped towards the glistening item and peered down at it. It was a large signet ring, runes covering its face and a name inscribed upon the band. The runes were of an arcane script that was alien to him, but the name was in clear Azerite. Gotho Oren. The name meant nothing. Ravenscar shrugged to himself and placed the item in his pocket. As he did so, Sigmar's word filled his head once more, causing him to fall to his knees. Auric Ravenscar, you have served me well. Bear the ring to Glimsforge. There you will find allies, and the path shall reveal itself. Retrieve the stave, Night Quester. Rising wearily to his feet, he sheathed his sword and headed for the surface. A new command seared into the recesses of his mind. Retrieve the stave, Night Quester. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be continuing that book in any future time lapses that I do as part of the Mortal Realms Mondays. So I'm pretty much done here. You've seen all of the assembly apart from those bits in which I had technical difficulties where the app that I was using to record the time lapse was failing. Let's take a look at the finished products. And I'm finally done. 21 and a half hours later, I'll just get it all tidied up and then I'll be back. Well, that took a long time, but now I'm finally done. I had a few technical issues with the time lapse, but I got all the figures that I wanted to assembled. So now I'm ready to actually crack on, do it issue by issue, make the videos hopefully weekly as I'd planned. So hope you enjoyed this one. It was a little bit different. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.